Hi guys, I'm Jo Harker Scholl um, from Harker Scholl Poetry. I'm a performance poet, spoken word artist. Uh, and what I want to do today is simply to introduce you guys to some techniques for performing your poetry, uh, whether that is online, um, in person or online. Uh, so lots of us have been going to open mic nights for years and enjoying performing our works in, in the company of other people. And now we're finding it quite strange adapting to doing that online in you know, formats like Zoom and Zombish. Uh, so many of our favorite uh, open mic night poetry slams are now turning to Zoom, of course, because we have to, but it sounds like this is a medium that's going to continue for a little while. So I just wanted to share some, um, some tips with you. I think first up, what's really important to say is that a poem that works really well on the page might not work so well in performance. And sometimes that's because it's a really beautiful poem on the page, and actually there are some minor details that in performance get lost a little bit. So if a poem doesn't work well on performance, like don't think that that means it's a bad poem. It may have a perfectly good poem on the page. But if you've got your poem, you think you've had a little think through, you think that you're ready to perform it, here are some ideas of what to do to get yourself ready for performance. Okay. Step one, you should definitely read your poem out loud. I would recommend recording it, even if that's just on your phone or something. Um, it's always a little bit cringy listening to your own voice back, but you'll get used to it. It's fun. Um, listening to your own poem is going to highlight to you uh, where the important elements are, what is being missed, where the cadences, where the pauses should be. And what I recommend is having a uh, a physical copy, so a paper copy or a digital copy, whatever you might have, um, that while you're listening back to the poem, you annotate on that copy. Uh, take a pause here. Take a breath here. Uh, take these lines quite fast. Run these lines on. Remember, all this, your layout on the page isn't necessarily going to be conveyed to your audience, and maybe that's fine. Uh, maybe you're happy for there to be no kind of line breaks. Uh, maybe you do want to pause. You don't need to pause at the end of every line. Of course you don't. Uh, but think about where you want those pauses. And think too about what is particularly important in your poem. You will know what are the key lines, what are the exciting things. How are you going to make sure that those words aren't lost? A lot of spoken word poetry has a lot of repetition because simply when you're listening to something, it's easy to miss one line. Uh, so you want to think carefully about like, how you can get that very important thing across. Use the silences, use the pauses, pace yourself. Um, the more you do this, the more comfortable you will get sitting in front of a camera or standing in front of a microphone, whatever it might be. Um, but the, the delay is going to really help. Um, you know, when, when you've really got an audience's attention and you let that, that pause linger there, they will lean in a little bit to find out what's going to happen. Um, so think about the pacing and speed. Look at your poem as a whole, say, where do I need to go quite quickly? Where do I need to slow it down? If, if you've done any kind of drama training or acting training, like use that, bring that in. Think about the cadence of your voice. Think about where you want some emotion to come across, where you want it to be absolutely flat. You don't need to be in crying because your poem is an emotional one. Um, but you, you have choices. You have a whole toolkit available to you. Um, I, I would really encourage you to edit your work for performance. So keep your page copy. Great, that's fine. That can sit there. Um, but think, actually, this is difficult to say. If you're looking, if you're reading a line through and you're stumbling over it, is there an easier way to say it? Are there rhymes that work in your accent that might not work in other accents that you haven't put in for that very reason? Well, you can put them in now because it's a performance. Um, Treat it as something separate, like many, many kind of great, um, great spoken word poets. People like uh, Joel Taylor, who I'm a great fan of, have um, a page version, a version that will be published, and then perhaps perform a different version on, the, on a certain night. That's absolutely fine. One thing I would really recommend is to memorize your poem as much as you can. Um, we can, most of us, memorize these things. And, and again, if you've got any acting training, acting history, whatever it might be, uh, that's going to come in really helpful here. But even if you don't, even if you think it's impossible that you're going to be able to get up there and perform without having a copy of the poem to hand, 
if you have memorized as much as you can, you're going to be engaged, able to engage with your audience, your viewers, so much more. Um, if you just need to glance down every now and then to check maybe what's the next line, what's the next verse, or even if you just want that physical copy as a reassurance, that's fine. Uh, but if you can look up and engage with your audience, uh, that's going to make things so much better and so much more exciting. Um, I think like memorizing can be an intimidating thing. Um, and, and I think people do want to have a copy to cling to, but I think what I really want to stress there is that um, make the copy that you're clinging to look nice. <laughs> don't be don't be frightened to look up. Um, have, so I have to think, I, I, I personally am always kind of like, okay, maybe don't bring your phone up. Um, I, I don't personally like uh, this style of performance where someone is looking at their phone and reading off their phone. Um, it, it can be a style if that's if that's kind of something you make that a choice. If that's something you want to do, make it a choice. Um, I, I tend to kind of try and bring a, a, a nice book if I'm reading something. I will, one I'll write about because that helps me to memorize it and I can write it nice and big. Um, you know, make sure you can actually read the poem. Don't just bring print a copy that's really really small. I'll write it nice and big. I'll write things in different colors to kind of remind me where my emphasis should be. Um, but I will always put that in a nice book of some sort or something that kind of I feel matches the aesthetic of what I'm trying to do in this time. Um, which kind of brings me on to talking about aesthetic as a whole. Um, if you are performing on Zoom, think about your background or Zoom, you know, other platforms are available. Um, and any kind of uh, online thing, you know, think about where you are. It would be lovely if you all have beautiful glamorous backgrounds, sure. Um, but if you can just sort of take uh, a few minutes beforehand to just think, okay, what is the lighting like? Can, can people see me? Uh, what is my background going to be here? I don't have a particularly exciting background, but I have my books, I have my beautiful flag. Um, that to me feels quite comfortable. If I see myself on the screen, which one of the frustrations of, of these things is that unfortunately we are confronted with our own image so much. Um, I kind of feel all right there. I'm, I'm quite centered within the screen as a whole. Um, yes, I am sitting in an odd place. I think that's something to say. This is not where I would normally sit in this room. Uh, but I've taken just some time to just sort of look at what's going to be around me and position myself within the space. Um, some quick tips, you know, if you just are in a small bedroom, you don't have a great amount of space to move things around, just a nice scarf or a nice throw over the background or you know just your, your chairs and your laundry and stuff that's just going to keep things um make things look a little bit nicer a well-placed ornament or something can give a, a focal point that would be really nice um but really importantly as you're as i'm saying this is also to get comfortable um so when i'm i often kind of do these little workshops for people who are performing in person and we spend a long time talking about uh how you stand uh, so I, I would really say, you know, take some time also to consider where you are most comfortable. If you can plant your feet firmly on the ground, that is always good, particularly if you get nervous. Have, being able to really plant your feet, draw the kind of the, the power of the confidence of the security of your connection with the ground right up through. Sit up straight. It's such a basic kind of thing. Um, but remember, it, it doesn't just affect how you look on the screen. It affects how you feel. And the confidence of how you feel. Maybe you're not a sitting up straight person, maybe you're a comfy person, maybe you want to be leaned back. Take the time to find what feels good for you and then be ready to go into that, uh, go into your performance in the most comfortable way possible. Because the more comfortable you are, the, uh, and comfortable not simply in how your back's feeling, but comfortable in terms of yourself, your confidence, your, your general readiness to perform. The more comfortable you are, the better your performance is going to be. Um, so this isn't kind of a, a huge amount. Of, I'm not saying anything profound and extraordinary here, but I'm just saying if you take a little bit of time before rushing in, I have I've seen a lot of kind of uh, Zoom performances, open mic nights, and uh, poetry slams lately, and I've I've witnessed some performances uh, that don't do the poems justice. And that's really frustrating. It's frustrating for me going, okay, I, I think I'm listening to this or maybe it's something I've heard before, 
and I think it's it's getting lost. So take that little bit of time, do the best you can. No one is going to be perfect at the moment. Nobody has beautiful, beautiful backgrounds. Nobody has fantastic pronunciation. No one has fantastic internet connection. There are so many frustrations with me at the moment. Um, but here's just a few little things to help you get organized, get ready to perform, uh, and really do the best that you can. Uh, performing is a wonderful thing. Uh, for those anyone who's kind of new watching this and you're new to performing your poetry, I cannot urge you enough to do so. Um, I, I've been sharing my poetry for a very long time now, and I have published works, I have works in magazines, um, by far and away, you know, I, I put things on, on Facebook and Instagram and so on, but by far and away, the most rewarding thing is performances. And it's in performances that people kind of come and talk to me and say, wow, I liked that. Oh, this poem made me think of this. And, and that is the most fantastic thing as a poet, to hear those responses, to hear people saying, I have heard your poetry and it has touched me. That's what we all want. So be bold, you know, put your poetry out there and be ready for people to respond to it. It's, it's wonderful and it's worth it. Um, so that's me. If you have any kind of questions or suggestions at any point and you're looking at performing yourself, please do get in touch. I'm really interested in helping people out with, um, with the development of them.